Hi, I'm Lucy. And I'm Ellie. And we're Luna Dive School. Today we're going to be talking through some basic scuba diving equipment with you. This is the kind of equipment that you'll be finding and experiencing and wearing when you're learning to dive. It can seem a little bit much or a little bit overwhelming if you've not been scuba diving before or tried it. And uh, so we thought we'd show you some of the different types of equipment you will be wearing and then also some other types of equipment that you might see on other divers that you might want to get a little look and understand as well. So this is what is known as the scuba unit and these are your most vital pieces of equipment for scuba diving. It is essentially what you wear and your breathing equipment. So the first thing to explain is this thing here. This is your BCD, your buoyancy control device, otherwise known as a jacket. It works a little bit like um, a life jacket in as much as it can inflate and deflate and it can keep you buoyant or less buoyant if you need it to. Basically it's to control where you sit in the water. This bit here is your regulator and your breathing apparatus and we're going to explain a little bit how both of those things work by showing you with, with us wearing it. Okay, so as Lucy said it goes on just like a jacket. Now this one is a little bit big for Lucy but you get the idea. So when you get your BCD, your jacket, you'll have this lovely Velcro cummerbund. That keeps the jacket nice and snug around your waist. It means it doesn't ride up and it doesn't sink down too low when you're swimming around in the water. You also have this waist clip here. Nice and sturdy, nice and secure. You have a chest clip here and tightening this is really handy to keep the weight off the edge of your shoulders. So if it was not to be there, your shoulders would roll back and it can be a bit uncomfortable, especially when you're on land with the tank on your back. So the jacket here, if you turn around Lucy for us, you've got this lovely big loop strap here which will go around the cylinder with a safety strap here that sits around the top of the valve. And that just stops the tank, if it falls out of this strap, it stops the tank from dropping down. You'll notice here, you've got a little dump valve. So that's a great way of quickly releasing a lot of air from your jacket should you need to. There's also a dump valve here on the shoulder for the dump valve on the shoulder here. The most important thing you'll find on the BCD is this inflator hose. So it inflates, uh, it connects to your tank. We'll show you how that works in a minute. But you've got this inflator mouthpiece here, which you use the big button for. It varies in color depending on the jacket, but it's always the biggest button will be for inflating orally. So just by pushing and breathing into that, it will be orally inflating the jacket. Um, also this gray button as well as for inflation, it's also for deflating. So in your lessons, you'll be told to raise this above your head to deflate, and that's simply because air rises. You'll know that bubbles rise in your glass of Coke, and the same goes underwater. The air that you breathe out, it forms bubbles and it goes up. So this red button here is for using the pressurized air from the tank to inflate straight into your buoyancy control device. So the air that comes in, it will have a very high pressured noise when you press the button, and that will help you inflate your jacket very quickly. So it's good for when you first got in the water and you want to be sitting on the surface nice and comfortably, or perhaps at the end of your dive when you're waiting for the boat to come pick you up, you want to be nice and positively buoyant sitting on the surface, so you inflate it all the way up until perhaps even these valves here start to fart because all the air is trying to push <laughs> itself out of it. But one thing to remember about this inflator holes and something we always tell students is it is not an elevator lift button. It is not there to lift you up and to drop you down again. It is there just to help you get to a certain level of buoyancy. So you're neutrally buoyant and then you can control where you sit in the water by swimming. And using your lungs. And using your lungs as well. Okay, so we're back to the scuba unit. What I want to explain now is the equipment that you breathe with. So first and foremost, what I need to show you is this bad boy. So ordinarily, this would be a cylinder full of compressed air, but most divers don't have their own cylinders full of compressed air. So for video purposes, we've made do with the fire extinguisher cause lockdown. So ordinarily, as I said, this would be a big cylinder full of air. So how do we get the air from the cylinder into us? We use a regulator. So the regulator is actually this part here. And what that does is it regulates the pressure of the air from the cylinder 
into a pressure that we can actually breathe basically because to get the amount of air that you would need for an hour's dive you need to really force it into this cylinder so what this cool piece of engineering does regulates it so it's easy for us to breathe with and we breathe it normally as we would breathe on land we just do it through our mouth not our nose so that is the first stage. I won't go into the science and the engineering to explain how that works. It's actually quite simple, but it does work. This is what's known as the second stage. And this is the bit that goes into your mouth like this. And what that does is that literally, again, helps you to breathe the air from the cylinder. It looks like this. It's a nice little rubbery mouthpiece. If you've ever snorkeled, it's exactly the same as a mouthpiece and it feels exactly the same as when you're breathing, when you're snorkeling. One of the great things about it is that you can do everything through it that you would be able to do on land. So you can sneeze through it. If you feel a bit sick, you can also be sick through it and you can continue to breathe absolutely easily and safely. So anything that you can do on land, you can still do underwater perfectly safely. Um, it has a little button here that also helps you to purge it. Sometimes, like Ellie and I, we laugh underwater, we smile underwater, and a tiny bit of water might go through into our mouthpiece, and it might trickle around. You just press that, and it blasts it out of the exhaust here. So that's the, the second stage. This rather snazzy yellow number here is known as the alternate air source, and it's exactly the same as the second stage. It's just there for emergencies. So it could be if your personal uh, second stage fails for any reason, you'll still be able to breathe through your, from your cylinder, through your, um, your second stage. As Ellie explained with our BCD, we need to be able to inflate it from our air, our air cylinder. So what we do here is we have our low pressure inflator hose. That's this hose here. And it's also known as an, as an LPI. Scuba diving loves acronyms. And that attaches to your inflator hose here that's attached to your BCD. And as she said, you literally inflate it with the red button and deflate it with the uh, silver grey button or white button sometimes. The final little tube that you can see here is our submersible pressure gauge, otherwise known as an SPG. And that tells you how much air you've got in your cylinder. This one is um, literally just for air. Sometimes you will also be able to have one that will have the air and it will tell you how deep you are as well. But this is the most essential bit. You want to know how much air you've got left in your cylinder so you can work out um, when you need to finish your dive. Okay, so you can breathe underwater. But how are you gonna get about? So, you'll be using fins like these. Not flippers. Not flippers. A dolphin has flippers. We have fins, unfortunately. So we've got two different types of fins here. We'll take you through these first. So the ones that Lucy got are kind of the ones that you'll most likely see from a dive centre, or maybe you've used them already from snorkelling. These are called full foot fins. They cover your whole foot. You don't need to wear anything else with them. Just put your bare foot in them and you can swim around quite easily. Uh, we have got a tip for getting full foot fins on, which makes it much easier which is to fold the back of your fin over. You'll put your feet inside it and then pop it around the heel. <laughs> Just like that. <laughs> so those are the ones that you'll most likely see. Some dive centers, and perhaps as you get a bit more experience, you might look into buying some of your own fins. So these are open heel fins. My ones are quite large and clunky, but um, I'll give you that one there, Lucy. Um, these ones are off, they're often a little bit bigger and um, they are adjustable in the back here so you can extend these clips so basically you can have lots of different size feet can you wear them so some dive centres do have them as an option to rent. You've got these release clips here to make it easier to get in and out of them, pop your shoe in there and then you're ready to go. So as I said you need to have a shoe to wear with them. The first pair Lucy's got here is a pair of little ankle booties um, and I've got some that go up over your ankle. So you might be wondering like what's the benefit of having some booties like this where you're coming in from the shore. You might want to have a little bit of protection for your feet with these rubber soles so you're not walking across sand or you know rocks or anything. Mm -hmm. It can be a little bit uncomfortable. It's not impossible but um, basically if you want to be 
a bit sensitive about your feet like I am, then it's quite nice to have a nice thick sole and it also protects your toe as well. If you're wading into the ocean, perhaps there's a rock that you, or you haven't noticed because of the waves, it protects your toes a little bit there as well. Um, and it also, these this neoprene, it keeps your feet a little bit warmer as well. So if you are yeah. prone to getting cold, like your feet is a quite a good place to keep nice and toasty warm. So you might choose to buy some boots to wear with some open heel fins. And the main difference between these two different types of booties are that there is no zip here and if you've got um, mobility issues or you've got wide ankles you can't get the zips done up. That is why I have them because when I first started diving I couldn't get the, the zips done up um, so I got these instead but there's no difference really in terms of how they work, it's just for comfort really. But putting on your equipment can be a little bit difficult sometimes so that's why you always have your trusted buddy to help you and I have a really great tip for putting on your fins so the first thing you do is you hand your fins to your buddy thank you buddy and then take one back <laughs> so you hold this in your right hand and you use your left hand to hold on to your buddy then you fold your left leg over your right knee and bend down ever so slightly slide it onto your foot nice and snug and you just pull on your straps and there you have your fin on. Then your body moves around behind you or in front of you, hands you the other fin, you hold on to them, swap the opposite leg over and tighten your straps and now you're ready to go. There's your Finderella service. <laughs> <laughs> when are goggles not goggles? when they're a scuba bath. Um, okay, so you can breathe underwater, you can move underwater, but you can't see anything underwater. <laughs> <laughs> so the final bit of equipment that we're going to explain to you is a mask. So here we have lots of different examples. Uh, it's a mask, face mask, um, definitely not goggles. Uh, and this is what helps you see. So this um, is glass, it's tempered glass, it's really super safe, um, it won't crack under pressure um, and uh, it's, it's obviously clear. You can get some um, that are tinted, especially for if you're at the surface. Some cool people have almost like those mirrored ones as well to make you look super cool underwater. Uh, but essentially all you really need your mask to do is to help you see. Um, this round here is silicon, um, it's also known as the skirt and that is what fits around your face nice and snug. Um, you have your strap here and then as you're a learner you will have a snorkel attached to it and you attach your snorkel to the left hand side of your mask because your regulator, your second stage, will be going over your right hand shoulder um, just to keep it so you haven't got everything on one side basically. Um, I'm going to demonstrate um, how you put this on with Ellie uh, just because it's a little bit easier because she's got a shaved head. <laughs> Um, but we'll also explain about um, how it might be if you haven't got a shaved head and you have hair like me. So, Ellie, here you are. Thank you. Here is your mask. Thanks. What you do is you place it on your face and pull the strap over your head, like so. And make sure it's nice and snug like this. Is it snug? Lovely and snug, thanks. You give me the okay sign to tell me it's okay. If it's not, it's got some straps here on the side which are adjustable um, and you can just pull them tighter or looser depending on um, your head shape basically. Everyone's got different shaped heads and, and size heads. I've got a really big head so mine's always quite um, bit big compared to everybody else's. The way you test if a mask fits you or not is you put it on your face and you breathe in through your nose and you see if it sticks. It's good to me. It fits. <laughs> the final thing I want to explain about masks is uh, the difference between how they might look. So if you watched our experience of scuba diving video, we explained in that that um, if you might feel like you've got a bit of tunnel vision or you might feel a bit claustrophobic, it might be a good idea to have a clear mask, which is exampled here. So basically the light can just come through, round the top, through the side, so you don't feel as enclosed in. The difference is though, you don't look quite as cool as Ellie does in her black mask. <laughs> <laughs> so um, what lots of people use on their masks is this slap strap cover and that just literally helps to slide it, slide it over your head. Mine is a special cover that comes on it, Ellie's literally has it built in, it comes with the mask. 
Um, then fairly cheap to buy. Mine has obviously got a um, Dive Club's uh, logo on it. Um, you can get loads of different styles, colours. It's all they're all great. And I have had one since I started diving because the silicon does kind of tangle up with your hair. Um, I suffer with uh, bad ears when I dive, so I've got a really um, ugly but essential mask, uh, which has these ear defenders over the side, and that just covers my ears and protects them from the pressure of the water column going into my ear. Um, everyone always makes fun of me, but I don't care because I'm comfortable underwater. So, you've got your scuba unit, you can move in the water, you can breathe in the water, you can see underwater, but you might want to be a little bit more comfortable than just being in your bathing suit. So, a lot of the time you'll be diving in a wetsuit. Um, so, we've got a few different options here so you can kind of see the kind of equipment you might get in the dive centre. So, here we've got Lucy's Aqualung wetsuit. This is a five millimetre wetsuit. Wetsuits come in different thicknesses for different warmth. So the thinnest you can get is three millimetres, that's for warm water diving, uh, where perhaps you don't really feel like you might need something that keep you that warm. Five millimetres for like fairly all rounder, like good neoprene wetsuit. And then for very cold diving, you can get a seven millimetre wetsuit, which is quite difficult to get on, but will keep you really nice and cozy. So this wetsuit here is specifically fitted for women. Not all dive centres will have wetsuits for women. That's not really too much of a problem, but you might need to be aware that you might need to size down a little bit uh, because it'll be easier, it'll be a better fit for you on your body. Um, but here you can see it's tailored slightly in on the waist and around the bust as well. So the great things about this particular wetsuit is that it has these lovely seals around the wrist and also around the ankle and that keeps the water nice and tight in your wetsuit. Wetsuits work by letting a little bit of water in and then that water gets warm from your body temperature and that water is what insulates you, not the neoprene. So these seals keep water from flushing in and out which can keep make you cold, so it's, they're really great. They also have zips on the side here which can make it a lot easier for you to get your arms in and out of wetsuits. Uh, and also a zip here just on the neck Sometimes it can be a little bit uncomfortable to have it zipped all the way up, like when you're on the boat, you might want to have it undone and then as you get underwater, so you can get nice and cosy, you might do it up again. On the back here, you'll see you've got this strap, this zip that goes all the way down to your waist and this long, long zip strap. And that's really so that you can do up your wetsuit by yourself, but really everyone gets everyone else to do their wetsuit up for them. So there's no shame in that. Um, it's quite a nice way to put on someone's wetsuit and you always give them a very reassuring tap on the shoulder. So that's a full length 5mm wetsuit. If you are diving with a full length wetsuit and you're having some difficulty getting in and out, there are some tips and tricks to help you get in and out of your wetsuit. The easiest one you can do is just use a plastic bag. So put a plastic bag on your hands as you're putting each hand in the sleeves and on your feet as you're putting each feet. It will just help your foot like slide all the way through the wetsuit and out the other end. Another great tip is to buy some surf leggings or dive leggings like these ones, which are O'Neill. They also help you to like slide your wetsuit on a lot easier. You can also get a rash guard like this. They're also great for UV protection when you're snorkeling, so you can wear them when you're not diving. Um, this is a really jazzy one made from recycled plastic, but there are lots of different styles you can wear as well. But again, it just helps you to get your wetsuit on nice and easily. It also can add a little bit extra warmth if you might feel a little bit cold on the dive too. Next up, we've got the three millimeter. This is a shorty wetsuit. So this is really for like some nice warm water diving. Again, you've got um, the zip on the back with the long strap. But what you won't see on this one is any of those like jazzy wrist seals or ankle seals obviously because it cuts off just here, just below the shoulder and just above the knee here. Uh, finally, this is a lava core. So lots of divers as they dive more often might find that they want to add or subtract things from their equipment to make them feel more comfortable in the water. So this lava core is a thermal t-shirt that you can wear underneath your wetsuit. It's great to wear underneath um, other wetsuits perhaps uh, instead of buying a thicker wetsuit it can be a bit cheaper than doing that this one here is nice and fleecy and it feels fleecy and warm even if it's wet so it's a great way of keeping your core warm and keeping um, you nice and toasty when you're underwater for an hour uh, the final thing that we're going to talk about quickly is a buff so buffs are used by lots of people that are out on the water so fishermen and sailors um, but lots of divers use them also so buffs are just a tube 
really of this very light material and you put them on and they're really good for protecting your neck from this strap here. Sometimes this strap can cause a little bit of irritation and it's a really great thing to have to keep your neck nice and comfortable and cosy. It's also really helpful if you've got long boat journeys to pull it over your ears to protect your ears from the wind as well. Not ever the most glamorous as is most things in diving but it's very very practical and they're quite a cheap thing to buy to have as a little addition to your diving. It's also good to make sure you don't get a nice farmer tan on your neck if you're spending lots of time on the boat. Thanks so much for watching our video about scuba diving equipment. Hopefully you found it useful. If you did, don't forget to share it with your friends. Go back and watch mm -hmm. our video on the experience of scuba diving to learn a little bit more about what scuba diving feels like. And don't forget to like and subscribe Luna Dive School to get more notifications when we release more videos.